Okay, so as of now, 36 participants are here. I will wait uh, more three, four minutes, then I will start the session. Hi, whatever it is, can you hear me? Okay, great. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> responsible for uh, Azerbaijan, Georgia, and Armenia for these three countries. And I'm heading a team of around 22 people for taking care of uh, these countries' sales and operations. 
So before starting uh, about the, this beautiful country, I would like to give a brief information about Duke Travels Private Limited. Duke Travel, uh, one moment, let me start the recording. Uh -huh. I'm pretty new in this Zoom, so I'm just trying to start the recording. Okay, so Duke Travel is a Delhi-based uh, integrated travel management company operating in CIS countries and India. And uh, we are dealing in uh, all Russian uh, CIS countries like Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Russia, Turkmenistan, Bulgaria, Belarus, Latvia, Croatia, Czech Republic, etc. And uh, we have been operating in these sectors since 2010. It's been 10 uh, years. And uh, we are quite pioneer now in this destination. So today uh, we will understand uh, about uh, Azerbaijan as a travel destination, as a product. So before this, I would like to tell you that uh, we have a team size of around 120 people here in the uh, head office in Delhi. And I'm also sitting here. My colleague, Mr. Viplav Arya, is also with me from the on ground from Azerbaijan. And uh, we have uh, our business development team in all uh, metro cities all over the India. They are also here in this meeting. They are listening us. Okay, so now uh, we will start about the Azerbaijan. <coughs> Can you uh, see the screen? I'm sharing this uh, Dukesir website. Uh, I mean, our website, dukesir.com. Nikola, is it, is it visible or not? Yes, 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 it's visible. Okay. Okay, so let me tell you about the Azerbaijan. According to Azerbaijan Center of Economic and Social Development, the country is in 39th position in uh, around 150 countries in tourism uh, competition, tourism competitors, and with the greatest increase in visitor uh, exports from uh, 2011, 2012 till 2020, and sharing around 46, 47% of market share. And, uh, to promote Azerbaijan uh, tourism, they have sponsored uh, Atletico Madrid jerseys also. And uh, now Azerbaijan is bringing uh, more than 30, 32 lakh uh, tourists uh, across the globe. And it is quite popular destination for Indians also. So I would like to show you on our website about uh, Azerbaijan. So before going ahead in the sightseeing city tour and about the destination, I would like to ask uh, from Mr. Vipla Varya that what is the current position on ground you know, about the COVID-19 and how it's going on everything in Azerbaijan. Good luck. Hi, guys. So uh, I hope uh, all of you are doing well. Uh, the situation here in Azerbaijan is, uh, you know, it's well under control. The number of uh, infection cases is about uh, 1,200. 
and about 11 deaths so far. And the city has been in lockdown, already in lockdown for two weeks, soon after, uh, you know, India went into lockdown. So, uh, yeah, my name is Bipla Varya. I'm a general manager operations here in Baku, handling uh, all the operations side of things in Azerbaijan. So it's great to have all of you online attending this uh, session and hopefully uh, by the end of this, you will have a fair understanding of uh, Azerbaijan as a tourist destination, as a country. And, uh, you know, it will help you to promote, uh, you know, Azerbaijan packages as well. Right, so Presh, uh, should I share my screen? Uh, can I take over, please? Uh, one minute. Now you can see it, yes. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so here we are. Yeah, so this is our presentation. Uh, you will find our presentation uh, online on our website, www.dukeinternational.com as well. Uh, so let me quickly run you through our presentation uh, for Azerbaijan and Baku particularly. And uh, then I will show you some, uh, you know, pictures and videos and explain you about the two places. Okay, so Azerbaijan is called the land of fire, you know, because Azerbaijan is, uh, it's, a, it's rich in oil and gas. It is one of the first countries in the world which started uh, organized uh, oil drilling. So, you know, where there is oil, there is natural gas. And where there's natural gas, there will be uh, sporadic fire, you know, like continuously burning for a long time. So, yeah, that's why <coughs> Azerbaijan is the land of fire. And... As you can see, some basic information about Azerbaijan. The population of Azerbaijan has touched uh, 10 million last year, okay, which is which is a very tiny population compared compared with uh, uh, India, of course. And as you can see on the screen, are you able to see my, the screen? Yes, Price? yes, it is being Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, Azerbaijan is on the banks of Caspian Sea. And uh, let me let me show you the Azerbaijan. One moment. Yeah, as you can see, I mean, this is Azerbaijan, and on the right hand side you see Caspian Sea. This is Georgia, and in red you have uh, one part of uh, Russia, which is bordering Azerbaijan, Armenia, and Iran. So these are, uh, you know. Turkey is also bordering uh, Azerbaijan. And Armenia is the only country which is not a friendly country to Azerbaijan since they have uh, had a border conflict. As you can see on the screen, Nagorno Karabakh. So there is a border con dispute, you know, similar to India Pakistan. But um, yeah. So Az Armenia is not a friendly country and the borders are closed. Apart from that, all the other borders are uh, open and there are closed ties. Azerbaijan has closed ties with these countries. Anyway, so the currency of Azerbaijan is Manat. It's called Manat. And uh, the time zone is uh, one and a half hours behind India, behind Indian standard time. So the time, is, time zone is same as uh, that of UAE, Dubai, for example. Okay, so flight connections. There are, uh, you know, flight connections from India Air Arabia, primarily the maximum, the uh, you know highest used uh, airline is Air Arabia, which has uh, flights uh, from all over, almost over India, and then uh, fly Dubai. And uh, we did a lot of, uh, you know, especially in the last year, we did a lot of combination tours on Air Astana, which is uh, the official Kazakh, Kazakhstan uh, airlines. So we did combination of uh, Almaty and uh, Baku. So typically you would fly from India to, from Delhi to Almaty, 
spend a couple of days there sightseeing and from almaty you fly to baku and uh, spend 3 days in baku and then you fly back the same way the same route okay as you can see on the map uh, air arabia flights you know the most common are air arabia and uh, fly dubai flights so they fly from delhi to sharjah and sharjah to baku this is how it goes so there is no direct flight uh, as of now azerbaijan airlines did start direct flights uh, last year but it was only for a few months so hopefully they will resume one day soon so flight is via sharjah and the layover time is usually around uh, one and a half hours or so so you deboard from one flight and you board another flight and your baggage gets uh, uh, through uh, directly okay so yeah uh, as you can see some prices you know some prices of basic items uh, that we frequently buy as you can see 1 us dollar is 1.7 manat manat is the currency of azerbaijan and uh, i would say 1 manat is approximately 40 indian rupees and if i talk about the visa process the visa process is very simple one of the easiest in in tourism because uh, uh, it's online visa and you just uh, need to submit your uh, application online there's no need for sending your passport or any kind of paperwork at all uh, you know so we have a a big department of uh, you know 6 7 uh, visa staff uh, we have our visa department they apply for visas all we require is a passport copy a scanned copy of your passport which you send to us and uh, with that we can apply for your visa to azerbaijan and usually it takes uh, it takes a maximum of uh, three working days or probably less within a day or two also sometimes possible so that's the normal visa process and if i talk about uh, uh, if if i talk about the urgent visa so that that you get within three hours the charges are different though but uh, it's pretty convenient to get uh, urgent visa as well sometimes if there's a you know uh, a problem with the visa if there's some information which on the passport or visa application which is incorrect it can quickly be fixed uh, before the arrival uh, of the guest in baku we can apply for urgent visa and we can make sure that uh, uh, you know the vacation is not ruined for that person we can that person can still uh, uh, enter azerbaijan clear immigration so let me tell you a little bit about uh, azerbaijan it's a first thing i would like to tell you is uh, you know that a lot of people they research on the internet they search on google what is uh, azerbaijan what kind of a country is azerbaijan and uh, they see the population they see that uh, you know 90% of the population is muslim so it would be similar to one of the uh, middle eastern countries and when they arrive in baku they are completely uh, they are completely surprised i mean you know they are completely uh, what should i say zapped because uh, it has absolutely no resemblance uh, the city or uh, the people or the culture has absolutely no resemblance with uh, the middle eastern countries azerbaijan was part of the soviet union um, you know it's it's so in 1991 when russia freed all these states they so these all these states formed uh, their own democracies and own national boundaries um so since 91 azerbaijan has been a free democratic secular country so in fact it is the most uh, secular country that i have been to where 90% of the population uh, is muslim uh, but you are free to practice your religion whether you are a christian or a jewish or a hindu it doesn't matter uh, everyone's free to practice their religion there is absolutely no discrimination between any uh, ethnic or religious backgrounds and uh, you will be surprised to know that uh, you know it's it's the perhaps one of the only few places uh, in the world where shia and sunni pray together in a mosque so yeah it's a great country very uh, very tolerant very vibrant 
and the culture is uh, i would say more russian european kind of a culture very liberal culture people like to uh, you know celebrate festivals and uh, dance and music everything is you know just so amazing here okay so let's take a little city tour um so in the picture that you see uh it is it is nizami you know nizami street which is uh, the city center of baku and that's the place where you know all the local uh, families friends and tourists they all it's like a recreation recreational place it's about uh, one kilometer across and uh, large area pretty large area similar to cannot place that we have in delhi but cannot place is full of traffic but here there's uh, absolutely no traffic because uh, you know uh, vehicles are not allowed inside so there are there are eating joints there are uh, you know shops restaurants cafes outdoor cafes and uh, the picture that you see here is uh, a fountain square it's a place uh, which is full of fountains a lot of fountains are there so yeah it's a beautiful and uh, nice recreational place uh, usually crowded on fridays and saturdays and uh, that's the weekend for people here and uh, you know people like to go out and socialize so that's the culture people like to drink and listen to music and dance so this is a you know it's a typical you know it's one of the the cafes like uh, not exactly outdoors but yeah kind of outdoor cafe that you have in baku this the boulevard area you know uh, i'll tell you how the city is the city baku is located on the banks of caspian sea now now it is it is like a peninsula it is very similar to marine drive uh, in mumbai and you know where the sea on one side and the city surrounding it you know uh, this is similar to that so boulevards this is boulevard street it is the you know baku equivalent of marine drive you can say so it's like a nice it has a lot of greenery it's a quite a large area there are a lot of you know parks where uh, <coughs> people you know, go there they children play you know uh, you know you can you can go skating cycling walking or just uh, sit at a bench and enjoy the beautiful view and the weather of baku so this is a uh, okay so, so maybe you know maybe ju just uh, i will tell you how uh, a typical you know a, a, a four days uh, trip to baku would be on the day, on day one you arrive in baku the flight arrival times are usually around uh, 11 o'clock in the morning the flight lands in baku and uh, after arrival uh, you know they clear the uh, immigration and they come out that takes about approximately 30 to 45 minutes 45 minutes usually maximum because uh, it's not a very crowded airport you don't have long queues uh, so it's quite convenient so our guides uh, receive the guest from the airport they stand there with the placard and you come out you know they will meet and greet and they will uh, take you from the airport so usually after uh, arrival from the airport we take the guest uh, first to uh, do money exchange to one of the banks uh, that are open and uh, you can change your us dollars to uh, the local currency manat you know just like any other country uh, the legal currency is only the local currency which is manat so people can change their money after that it's time for lunch so people go Uh, the, the guests would go uh, to the restaurant to indian restaurant have lunch there and after they finish the lunch their lunch say around 2 uh, o'clock 2 o'clock or 2:30 so they would be heading to the hotel so the hotel check in time is usually 3 o'clock in most hotels it's around 3 o'clock some hotels maybe 2 2:30 it depends for larger groups uh, you know sometimes uh, we negotiate and we can get uh, 
the check-in a little earlier, like one hour earlier. But uh, anyway, you got the idea. Airport to bank, to money exchange, and from there to the restaurant, to the hotel. So after arriving at the hotel, you check in and uh, you take rest for some time. And the sightseeing begins, uh, say, around 5.30 or 6 o'clock. The guides uh, all assemble, all guests assemble in the lobby and your sightseeing begins. So the first day sightseeing, it takes you to uh, a place called Highland Park, a panoramic city tour and Highland Park. Highland Park is, uh, uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's one part of Baku from, it, it's, at a, it's, a, it's at a height. And from there you can see, you get a very nice panoramic view of the city, uh, of the city as well as the Caspian Sea. So it's very beautiful, particularly in the evenings. And it is just next to Flame Towers. I'm sure you have seen uh, uh, the pictures of Baku. If you search for pictures of Baku, you will see the Flame Towers, three multi-storied you know, skyscrapers that look like uh, flames of a fire. It, it uh, symbolizes Azerbaijan as a land of fire. All right. So after that, uh, you have dinner at in an Indian restaurant, authentic Indian dinner and you're dropped back to the hotel where you can get a good night's sleep. So coming to day two, we start the day tour uh, in the morning. You have breakfast at the hotel and uh, leave from hotel, say around 10 o'clock in the morning and you go to Old City. So Old City is the ancient part of Baku. It's the original, you know, uh, Baku city from the ancient times. And, you know, it was surrounded by boundary walls and it's, it's uh, just <clears throat> very ne next, to the, next to the Caspian Sea. So it's, uh, you know, old city has retained. It still, it still looks like uh, the way it did, you know, in the, in the ancient times, you know, same kind of buildings, same kind of architecture. And uh, there is a, there's a palace museum which uh, once belonged to um, Emperor Shirvan Shah's. So that's a, uh, you know, it's one of the, you know, it's, it's a museum, not, it's not uh, suitable for mice groups, but families really like, really find it interesting. But even walking through old city, you get a feeling of going back in time, 1000 years back in time. And then you have souvenir shops. It's a good place to buy Azerbaijani traditional souvenirs. And, uh, you know, it's nice to click photos with all the uh, ancient architecture and the streets and everything. So after uh, Old City, just uh, nearby, Old City is close to the city center. So we bring you to uh, Nizami Street. Nizami Street is... Uh, uh, the city center of Baku. So from Old City, you come out, there's a, there's a boundary wall and just across there is uh, Nizami Street, which is the city center, which I told you just uh, a few minutes ago, that uh, it's the most happening place in Baku. For cafes, you know, there are people all around from various uh, nationalities, locals, as well as foreigners. Um, you know, there are cafes, eating places, shopping places, a lot of stores are there, you know, and a lot of uh, times discounts, uh, you know, there are discount sales going on, especially around winter time. So yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful place to be. On day three, uh, it's, it's not a part of a standard uh, inclusion in every tour, but uh, there's a place called Gobustan. Gobustan is, uh, okay, Azerbaijan, by the way, it's one of the it's probably uh, the only country, only city which has three UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Shirvan Shah's Palace in Old City, which I just uh, told you about. And Gobustan is also one of them. So it is, uh, you know, the, um, the oldest human artifacts, the oldest uh, human remains were found in Azerbaijan and they were found in the Gobustan area. So in Gobustan, you have uh, ancient... Uh, you know, ancient cave paintings and ancient artifacts, you know, of the oldest, you know, the oldest uh, people in human civilization on earth. So 
Gobustan is about uh, 60, 65 kilometers one way drive from Baku. It takes about one hour or so. And it's a nice uh, excursion. I mean, even if you are not very fond of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, artifacts and museums, you will still like the, you will still enjoy the drive and the view from the top of uh, Gobustan. That's quite interesting. It's a, it's a nice view. You get, you see the Caspian Sea on one side. On the other side, you see Gobustan National Park. And Gobustan also has uh, just nearby, uh, just close to this 3D museum, there is. Uh, um, there's mud volcanoes. So one of the unique things about Azerbaijan uh, is its mud volcanoes. Now mud volcanoes exist only in three, four countries, three, four places on our planet. And uh, Azerbaijan is one of them. So instead of, instead of lava flowing, uh, instead of hot lava flowing, flowing from a volcano, here you'll find mud flowing. So when you're going towards driving towards Hindustan, uh, uh, Gobustan, you can already see a lot of hills formed, uh, you know, as a result of mud volcanoes. So that is another excursion. Usually, a lot of times we combine uh, the 3D museum and uh, mud volcanoes excursion. So in order to go to mud volcanoes, uh, you know, the, your tourist vehicle vehicle will uh, drop you at the nearest uh, roadhead. From there, you take, uh, we arrange uh, those, uh, you know, old Russian four by four cars, which will take you on an off-road ride up to the mud volcanoes. So the ride lasts about 15, 20 minutes one way. And it, that in itself is quite exciting. A lot of people find it very exciting, uh, you know, the, the off-road drive itself. Okay, so yeah, it's a unique phenomenon which you get to see. I mean, which you will not get the chance to, uh, see, even if you're traveling every year to another country, it only exists in a few places in the world. All right. So coming to the next. Uh, so Baku city has a lot of tourist attractions. And uh, usually most of the tourists, they come to Baku for uh, usually three nights, four days. And uh, it takes around three days. Let me be honest with you. It takes around three days to show you Baku. And if you're going to the other excursions like uh, Gobustan and, um, you know, uh, or you're going out of the city to one of the, uh, you know, hill stations nearby, which are day excursions. Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, four days, four nights, five days is the minimum, I would say. Five nights is even better. So in the city, uh, as you can see in the picture, there is Ferris wheel. It's like a giant wheel. It's similar to London eye, or you, some people also call it Baku eye. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a short ride on that, um, you know. And you can see the Caspian Sea in the background, the blue color, blue waters of Caspian Sea. Caspian Sea is the world's biggest lake. If you remember uh, reading in geography, in general knowledge, uh, you know, questions, which is the biggest lake in the world. So Caspian Sea is the biggest uh, lake in the world. It has, it has saline water. And we organize uh, boat rides as well, like a short ride from the city center, from the boulevard area on the seaside. The cruise boat takes you on a ride, which lasts about 25 minutes, 30 minutes, and brings you back. It's a few kilometers back. So you get a very nice view. It's very pleasant uh, you know, to take a boat ride and usually uh, you know it's it's a part of the package the tour program and um, on day four usually on day three or day four we take our guest uh, to fire temple and fire mountain i will i will uh, talk a bit about it uh, i will explain it to you in just a short while i'll show you some pictures as well because uh, it will help you understand much better Okay, so these are some artifacts, uh, some souvenirs which you can buy. A lot of people ask, what is, uh, you know, what's there for shopping in Azerbaijan? Okay, so personally, I mean, uh, personally, I like to buy these kind of stuff, you know, souvenirs, which is traditional, which is unique, and you will not find, uh, you will not find these anywhere else because these talk about the Azerbaijani culture and the traditions. Old city, 
old baku city is a good place to buy it because the prices are cheaper you get the same thing in city center but uh, it's better to buy them from old city and uh, as part of shopping day uh, we take our, our guests uh, we take groups to the shopping malls the big shopping malls there are there are a few large shopping malls where you get everything from clothes to a supermarket and all the supermarkets have all the malls have large supermarkets uh, on one floor of the building and there you get all kinds of stuff like chocolate you know you can buy azerbaijani vodka azerbaijani wine so yeah i mean these are cheap and really good quality As, and if you're traveling around winter time before winter during winter or uh, soon afterwards there are huge discounts on winter clothes so winter jackets are really awesome they're uh, you know very good quality and uh, the prices are very competitive uh, with india as well so uh, yeah some interesting facts if you know gary kasparov who was the chess champion he was from azerbaijan here the public transports are uh, is you know usually the for foreign tourists is usually just a uh, uh, taxi because uh, there is a bit of a language problem here azerbaijan is not an english speaking country really so it is we always advise our guests to be with the guide and uh, the guide takes them around because they don't need to wander about on their own anyways but yeah and for locals uh, metros and are the most uh, frequently used uh, mode of transport to commute from one place to another okay so there's a whole lot of great hotels you know uh, as you see in the picture on the bottom left that's the flame towers so flame towers uh, you know it has a fairmont hotel fairmont hotel in one of the towers so one tower is fairmont hotel and um, there are several great hotels uh, on the seaside in the city you know jw marriott boulevard hotel in tourist fairmont uh, hayat holiday inn and several other hotels four star and five star so usually we don't we usually do not uh, uh we we haven't sold any three star hotels really we only use four star or five star because we get uh, four star for the price of three star it's still uh, not a very expensive it may look like europe it may seem like uh, you know europe but uh, it's much cheaper than europe so that you know that gives us a an opportunity to divert a lot of uh, tourism which is traveling towards europe and you know trying to bring them to baku instead for less money you have great vacation and less cr uh, crowd you don't have to wait for long queues anywhere really okay so that's uh, shirwan shah's palace which i was uh, talking about and this is one of the three unesco world heritage sites uh, which exists in uh, uh, you know azerbaijan and um, it used to be the king's palace but now it's converted to a museum so it's not part of a standard inclusions the entrance but usually uh, 50% of the time our clients ask us to include uh, an entrance to this so we would do that if you are not interested in museums at all then we can exclude that you know from your tour package as well okay so this is also in uh, um old city and on the left hand side you are looking at uh, caravan sarai so it was a sarai for caravans traveling along the silk route so uh, let me tell you a little bit about the history of uh, azerbaijan so azerbaijan was uh, you know it was on the it was on the ancient silk route you know you must have read about silk route in history and uh, how the silk route uh, you know it stretched from uh, the mediterranean all the way up to the eastern coast of china and korea uh, you know going through all of central asia and uh, uh, mongolia as well 
So Azerbaijan, the Baku city was a major trading hub in, uh, you know, during those days over a thousand years ago. So there are people, Indians used to travel from India. They used to walk down across mountains and deserts and jungles. And they used to come all the way from India to uh, Baku. And similarly, from all the other Central Asian countries as well. So Caravan Sarai, which you see on the left-hand side, this is where uh, the caravans took rest. People and their camels or, you know, mules or horses or camels, whatever they had, you know, they would take shelter. They, could, they would, uh, uh, you know, stay here. And the other building which you're looking at uh, is called the Maiden Tower. So Maiden Tower has an interesting, uh, you know, history about it. It is said uh, that, uh, you know, the you know, the emperor's daughter was in love with some um, ordinary guy from his kingdom. And then uh, her father put him in, uh, you know, he literally held a prisoner in this maiden tower. And there are uh, theories that uh, suggest that she jumped from the terrace of uh, maiden tower and she committed suicide. So that's how it gets its name maiden tower. Usually, uh, entrance to Maiden Tower is not usually not recommended unless for FITs we do include because um, families or a group of friends who are interested in the, um, you know, history or archaeology, they would find it interesting. Okay, so yeah, we move on to the other attractions the, of, uh, you know, Azerbaijan, old city, there's carpet museum. Azerbaijan is famous for carpets, right, from the days of... Uh, uh, the Silk Route, you know, handmade carpets were sold. They were bought and sold and transported to um, countries all across, all around the Silk Route uh, region. So there's, you know, History Museum. There is Bibi Hebat Mosque. A lot of times we, uh, on, especially on Gobustan or Mud Volcanoes uh, excursion, Bibi Hebat is on the way and uh, we take our guests there for a photo stop or if they want to visit the museum. Uh, you know, many uh, of our Muslim guests, they would like to go and pray there. So one of the days we include, we keep some time so that uh, they can go to Bibi Hebat Mosque and pray. pray. Uh, Gopustan and Mud Volcanoes I told you about. Atishga is the fire temple, which I will talk about in a little bit. Yanardag is a fire mountain, which I'm going to talk about uh, shortly. And Caspian Sea, as I told you, uh, you know, so in summertime, there are beach activities in Caspian Sea as well. Apart from that, there are many cities, uh, many, you know, uh, towns and, uh, you know, places where be beautiful places, especially up in the hills, where tourists like to go and they like to uh, stay there for a, a day or so or just go for a day excursion. So Guba, Gusar, Shadag, Sheki. Uh, Ganja city is on the other side. It, it is the former uh, capital of Azerbaijan. In the ancient times, it was the capital. Okay, so why Azerbaijan? Why should we travel to Azerbaijan? Because it has unique climate con climatic conditions. Baku, uh, the name Baku means city of winds. It, you know, more than 200 days in a year, the it is always windy here. You know, there are and it's only it's it's very unique it's a very bizarre phenomenon because uh, if you move out of baku city it's not windy at all so it's very strange how you know only in baku it is so windy throughout the year so it's rich in uh, national dances food and cultures and the greatest thing uh, that you must know about uh, tourist destination or you must wonder whether it's a, is it a safe place or not? Can we move around on our own or not? I mean, is it a safe place? Are there crimes? So let me uh, tell you that there's, you know, absolutely, I mean, there's uh, almost zero crimes in Baku. The entire Baku city is under CCTV surveillance. And uh, I have not heard of any crimes in the last two and a half years uh, that I've been living in Baku. So it's the largest country in the Caucasian region. Uh, Caucasian region is the 
you know, it's part of uh, Eurasia, let's say. It's between Europe and Asia. So this is the largest uh, country amongst these. Okay, so this is uh, mud volcanoes, as you can see on the screen. There are pictures of mud volcanoes. And the one in the middle, which you're looking at, this is like a mud bath. So the mud volcanoes uh, has, uh, you know, some oils in it, which has a therapeutic value. So there's actually, uh, from other Central Asian countries, a lot of people come and they undergo treatment, uh, you know, oil bath. It's called naphthalan treatment. They go undergo this oil treatment for 15 days at a stretch. They would stay and, uh, you know, it, so it has a lot of healing properties for skin and other ailments as well. Yanardag, the burning mountain. So there's an interesting story, like I told you, you know, where there is oil, there will be sources of natural gas. So, and there are many sources of natural gas uh, at these places, but there's an interesting story about this, that uh, once a shepherd, he's, he stopped here, he, he took a break here, and he wanted to cook for himself, or he, maybe he was cold or something. So he, uh, he, he burned some firewood, and this source of natural gas from coming from underground, it caught fire. And since then, it has been burning. I mean, there can be rainfalls, there can be snow or wind or whatever, but uh, the fire won't go away. I mean, it's been burning uh, since then for many, many decades. So this is one of the most, uh, you know, it is part of standard inclusions. All our groups go to Yanardag, which is the fire mountain about 25 kilometers uh, out of Baku city. So fire temple and fire mountain are covered on the same excursion because they're on the same route. Okay, so Gabala is, uh, uh, you know, is about 200 kilometers from the city. You know, it's similar to a hill station like we have in India, Nainital, Masuri, and all these places. So approximately it's the same distance, but it takes a very short time because, uh, uh, you know, the roads are much better. It just takes about three and a half or maximum four hours, including a short break on the way to reach uh, Gabala. And what's there to see in Gabala? Well, it's a very beautiful place. And if you, you know, uh, a few months every year, the place is snow covered from winter all the way to um, March or April, you'll find snow on the top. And, uh, and most of the tourists, it's, for most of the tourists, it's a day excursion, which means you leave early in the morning from Baku and you reach there and we provide you Indian lunch in Gabala, which is a big advantage for most Indian tourists because Indians, you know, they want um, Indian food. So they have Indian lunch, they go sightseeing, cable car ride. There are a lot of activities which I will... Uh, talk about in a little while, I will show you pictures. So that will be, uh, you know, it'll be easier for you to understand. And by evening, by dinner time, you come back to Baku city, have dinner, and uh, you are dropped back to your hotel. Similarly, Shadag is on, is, it's, Shadag is on a, a different route, but uh, it's the same kind of day excursions that we conduct and, uh, uh, you know, the distance is approximately the same. And it takes about three and a half hours or four hours, one way to get there. If you want, uh, you can always stay in Gabala for one night and or Shadag for one night. But in Shadag, there's no Indian food. In Gabala, we provide Indian food. So many of our groups, you know, they go and they stay there one night and they come back the next day. They come back to Baku the next day. Okay, uh, like I was telling you, this oil bath treatment, there's a place called Naftalan. So Naftalan is a place uh, about 100 or 150 kilometers from Baku, where a lot of people, you know, Europeans and people from Central Asian countries, the other CIS countries, they go there for this uh, Naftalan treatment. It's supposed to have amazing therapeutic uh, qualities. It heals... Uh, uh, psoriasis and arthritis and rheumatism, etc. I mean, it's a 
ancient way of treatment and a lot of people believe in it and they so uh, well it's available to indians as well fire temple so fire temple as i said i mean this is uh, one of the unesco world heritage sites uh, fire temple is called atishka in the local language it's called atishka atish means fire i will show you uh, some pictures as well so this was uh, you know uh, in ancient times azerbaijan was uh, azerbaijan azerbaijani population was zoroastrians if you know parsis if you know zoroastrians were fire worshipers they used to worship fire and um, it's not a coincidence that uh, hindus are also fire worshipers so in the ancient times there was a you know historical connection between baku and uh, and india people used to walk all the way from india you know sikh as well as hindu they used to uh, walk all the way they used to go to fire temple when uh, you know they, when the population was zoroastrians they were parsis uh, zoroastrians coming from iran side as well and they used to pray together so fire temple is built around uh, there was a natural source of fire which has been burning which had been burning for many centuries or maybe thousands of years and they built a temple around it and around the temple as you can see in the picture uh, you know there are rooms there is there's like a caravan sarai so all these pilgrims and traders who used to come they used to take shelters their animals would take shelter and uh, recover from injuries at the same time it was a religious gathering as well as trade uh, if you can look at this picture you know these two men sitting there they are negotiating on a deal so they uh, maybe they are barter bartering something so one person has brought something from one country and the other person is going to exchange it for something uh, else so yeah it's quite an interesting and uh, amazing thing i mean we did not in in india we didn't learn much about uh, silk route we didn't know uh, we didn't learn much about azerbaijan or anything but the historical connection between india and azerbaijan takes us back 1000 years and uh, you know you will be very surprised that uh, i think 15 or 20% of the words in azerbaijani are similar to hindi you know like um, you know aina for example aina vakil mahabbat ishq these are the same words in azerbaijani because uh, hindi also uh, you know it's kind of originated from persian and so did azerbaijani language so yeah it's it's quite interesting uh, you know to learn that okay so gobustan i already told you about and uh, yeah these are our contact details so let me take you through uh some photo galleries so it will be most uh one moment it will be interesting for you to see them and understand wait this all right so this is the location of azerbaijan india is somewhere here on the eastern side of pakistan as you can see afghanistan iran and that's the huge caspian sea which is the world's biggest uh, saline water lake and that's azerbaijan right there on one side you have turkey turkey is a friendly country to azerbaijan turkey georgia russia iran okay this is fire temple so uh fire temple is located in the absheron region uh near baku and it was the place was very oil rich so in, in you know so during the soviet period uh you know in the last century they used to drill a lot of oil so the natural source of uh, you know the source of the natural gas gas stopped but now there's an artificial source but it burns the same way uh as it did over a thousand years ago and it looks exactly the same the place the temp fire temple has been converted into a museum and it is a must see um a tourist attraction 
for all tourist groups traveling to Azerbaijan. So it's part of our standard inclusions. And um, you will be surprised to, the, to see the artifacts, the Hindu and Sikh uh, artifacts which are there. There, is, there, is, there are scriptures written in uh, Devanagari, in Devanagari script, our tourists are surprised when they see, you know, it's all uh, uh, engraved on the walls, over the doors, and there is Guru Mukhi script as well. So it's very fascinating and it's, a, it's an eye opener. That's the Baku airport. So I'm just going to take you through a photo gallery and I'll tell you things about, uh, uh, you know, the city because a picture is worth a thousand words. So, yeah. So this is the airport. It's the most, it's a new Baku airport and it was just built uh, just a few years ago. And uh, it's one of the most uh, beautiful and most modern airports. And the best thing I like about this airport is it's not too crowded. You don't have to wait in a very long queue or, you know. All right. So this is a view from the Ferris wheel, the so-called Baku Eye. And, uh, you know, it's in the boulevard area. And as you can see, the city has, it's a little bit hilly on one side and there is Caspian Sea on the other side. So it's just amazing. What you're looking at is the TB Tower. So TB Tower uh, has a revolving restaurant right there. If you can see, you know, little, little ball sort of a thing on the tower. That's a revolving restaurant. So sometimes, uh, uh, you know, FITs like family groups and all, they would like to, you know, go and have dinner and get an amazing view of the city as well as the Caspian Sea from there. And this is just in front of, uh, very close to flame towers. So you, flame, you see flame towers just in front of you. So, so in the city center, Baku city has very beautiful parks, very green, very clean and, uh, really amazing fountains. So this is one of the fountains near the city center. <coughs> Excuse me. This is Nizami Street. And uh, Nizami Street is the city center, as I told you. you. See, people like to walk around with friends and family and, uh, uh, you know, basically have a good time. So it doesn't, you know, it, there hasn't, doesn't need to be a special occasion to go to the city center. You can walk there anytime and it's nice and vibrant and, you know, make you look, look around and have a good time. This was under construction. It is on, it, it, this is a mall being constructed and it will soon be open in a few months, I hope. Uh, construction is almost over. This is the view from the Ferris wheel. also from the Ferris wheel, that's the flame tower. The unique thing, the, the great thing about, about flame tower is that uh, uh, there are LED lights on all three towers. These are huge buildings, very tall buildings. And there are LED light display, which goes on after dark, you know, all the way till after midnight. And you have these kind of displays on that going on. So it's just amazing. That's the Ferris wheel. That's Boulevard Street, Boulevard Street, and you see Fa Flag Square in the background. Flag Square, uh, uh, you know, the, the flag that you see right now, it was the uh, second tallest flag pole in the world, but uh, it was damaged due to very strong winds, you know, so I think hopefully they will build it again. This is Boulevard area. It's a recreational place. It's a place to exercise. It's a place uh, uh, for honeymooners to romance. It's, it's a place where children can play. And uh, it's very nice and pleasant any time of the day, especially after evening as well. In the summers, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, there are a lot of people who like to go out there, locals as well as foreigners. This is one of the hotels, uh, one of the hotel restaurants, swimming pool, you know, in Boulevard, we, there are many rides, you know, Azerbaijan is, uh, is really great for uh, um, families as well. It's a, it's a great destination for mice because 80% of our tourists, uh, you know, uh, that we bring to Azerbaijan are mice, but uh, families love it too. It's very romantic, very nice. Uh, 
very clean, very safe for families and children. This is like a joyride in a train on the boulevard area. This is Fire Mountain, which I told you about. That's our tourist group right there. And uh, there are a lot of festivals that go on. So this is uh, around the New Year time. So in the city center, the fair happens like this. And, uh, you know, it's, there's a lot of excitement in the air, a lot of fast food available, you know, Turkish, continental, Azerbaijani. Yeah, and it's really a treat for people. That's the Duke International team uh, during the New Year time. And that's the flame tower you see in the background. Flame towers again. On the left-hand side, the TV tower. Yeah, this is uh, Atishgarh Temple, Fire Temple. These are statues, non-living statues, but uh, you get the idea. There's a there's an interesting deal going on, negotiations going on there. And you can see, uh, you know, sadhus from ancient times. So these are depicted in small uh, sculptures like this. Okay, so that's Fire Temple. Let me show you a bit of old city as well. Can you see the Maiden Tower? Prash, do you see the Maiden Tower? Okay, yeah, so that's Maiden Tower in the evening time. It's very nice. Old City is also great in the evening time. This is the morning view of Old uh, Maiden Tower in Old City. And you see, it is one of the, you know, the unique thing about Azerbaijan, out of Baku city, is that you see ancient architecture and you see uh, Soviet or European kind of architecture and the most futuristic architecture that you see uh, in cities like Dubai, uh, all, you know, all in the same vicinity, all, uh, you know, in the same city. All right, so this is old city. Shirvan Shah's Palace Museum. Okay, let me. So Baku is a place for uh, beach activities as well. So in the summertime, the beaches are, the nice good beaches are out of the city though. But uh, it's really amazing. I mean, if you're traveling with your family, uh, to Baku, you may want to spend a night or, uh, you know, near the beach or go there during the day and for beach activities and come back by evening. But around the beaches, there are uh, um, no Indian restaurants. Uh, typically, our groups, our guests, they have Indian lunch and dinner almost on all the days. Unless you request for Azerbaijani food, we can arrange that, of course. Uh, you won't find Indian uh, food during the, near the beaches, but if you're non-vegetarian, it's no problem at all. You can find something interesting, kebabs and all to eat. You can drink beer and, uh, you know, you can have a good time at the beach. Bathing. It's very exciting for children as well as grown-ups. There are water parks. There are water slides. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> there are day excursions which I told you about. Uh, Gobustan, I'll just show you some pictures so you get a better view. This is the view from Gobustan. So even if you're not a very big fan of uh, archaeology, you will still enjoy the excursion and the view from there.
what about excursions to the mountains? These are very popular. Everybody, I mean, a lot of, uh, at least I would say 60% of our guests who come to Baku, they do travel to the mountains, uh, to Gabala, as, and mostly on a day excursion. Some people do like to stay there one night and then come back the next day, but most of these are day excursions starting early in the morning. You leave from Baku. And uh, this is the route. This is how it looks. Very nice and uh, beautiful because, you know, Azerbaijan is very rich in nature. It's very uh, beautiful. Okay. So on the way to Gabala, uh, on the way to Gabala, there's one halt on the way at Nokur Lake. This is Nokur Lake. And it's a nice, uh, beautiful place to take a short break, drink chai, and uh, continue towards Gabala. And Gabala, during winter time, uh, say around oct after October, November, all the way up to March or April, the, you know, there, is, there is snow. There's a lot of snow there. So it's cold, enjoyable in the daytime. At the same time, it's just amazing uh, view. It's amazing landscape. These are uh, pictures, uh, you know, uh, recent pictures from last winter. And at Gabala, it's famous for as a, as a ski resort. A lot of Europeans, a lot of Russians, as well as uh, Azerbaijani people go there for skiing. And not only adults, uh, you know, children also go skiing and there, there are a lot of fun activities there like slides, for example, as you can see in the picture, you know, children slide down from that slope and it's quite exciting for them, you know. This is the cable car, which takes you up, uh, uh, you know, to the top of it. We take you to two phases and the places that which you saw are uh, there. This is a summertime view when the snow has melted this is a, it, this is how it looks in the summertime and it's pretty long and steep uh, cable car ride up to the top skiing is quite popular this is gabala this is one of the uh, you know, view from one of the hotels there. See, there's a lot of snow. A musician in uh, on the way, this was on uh, Nokur Lake. So, you know, the musician plays uh, traditional tunes. And if they see an Indian, they will play some Indian tunes as well. That's Nokur Lake again. Okay, so similarly, we also have, uh, you know, similar to Gabala, like I said, Shadag is also a ski resort. And similar kind of landscape. One moment, please. Yeah, similar kind. So this is a Shadag ski resort. It's also a great uh, ski resort, but Indian tourists. They're not much, Indians are not much into skiing really, uh, but they would definitely enjoy the view and take a cable car ride up to the hilltop. That, uh, that is, uh, you know, uh, Shadag Mountain Resort. Very nice view. You can take these rides on uh, ATVs. I forgot to tell you in Gab uh, Gabala, uh, there, there is this uh, Gaba land. Gaba land is like an entertainment park. And there are a lot of activities like rifle shooting. A lot of times we organize rifle shooting there for our tourist groups and many other rides. So usually we include cable car and rifle shooting. And okay, so that's near Shadag. This is on the way. Okay, I want to show you mud volcanoes. What does it look like? What is mud volcanoes? This is how it is. 
mud erupting, not violently, but sometimes it does. Uh, once in a year or two years, it erupts violently. But most of the times it's like this and you can get a very close view. And Azerbaijan is also a place for great adventure, like for hikes. So for people who are interested, uh, we can organize hiking trips this, like these in the snow, in the mountains. You know, the western and northern part of uh, Azerbaijan is all, all hilly, it's all mountainous and there are very beautiful places easily reachable from Baku. Azerbaijan is a small country, it's not a very huge area though. And these are the kind of adventures to waterfalls and trekking trails, it's quite interesting. Hey, Prayesh, I'll just pass it on to you. Uh, yeah, adventures like these, hiking. If you have people who are interested, uh, you know, if you have clients who are interested in adventure, we can organize this, make them stay there in a village homestay uh, one night and bring them uh, back to Baku. I just want to quickly, Prayesh, I just want to quickly show some nice uh, uh, events that we did. Uh, in the recent times. So we organized a lot of uh, MICE events. Most of our business is MICE and we organize conferences, uh, you know, gala dinners. Gala dinners are usually there for every group, but yeah, big events with traditional programs, belly dance show, Bollywood dance, and award ceremonies conferences, product displays, concerts, like we did for this group, they're all wearing Azerbaijani traditional uh, uh, attire. And this is how they attended uh, their award distribution. And it was quite interesting. Everybody loved it. And this is a traditional Can you hear me now? Hello. Hi, Prash. Yes. Yeah. So, as I told you, as, as I told you in the beginning, that I'm new in this uh, Zoom, and when I made post uh, with club, and I was not able to say anything in between because I was muted. So now uh, I, I would like to tell uh, only one thing. Vipulak, can you stop this video, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, carry on. Yeah, so one minute. It is still uh, sharing. Can you just stop it? Stop uh, sharing this screen. Hold on, yeah. Done. 
Okay, great. So I would like to tell everyone that whatever the pictures uh, Riplav was showing you, you can uh, also see these pictures on our website, books here. Everything is there. I would like to show you now, one minute. And also, uh, the time is over now, so you people can ask your questions. If you have any doubt about uh, Azerbaijan and if you have any question in your mind, you can, you can write on the chat box and I will reply one by one. You have uh, five, 10 minutes to ask these questions because I have to end the session because another colleague for another destination is waiting. We have a limited time slot. And as you know that Azerbaijan is, uh, there is much more to say, but uh, we have some time foundations. You can write your questions in chat box. I, I will answer one more time. In the meanwhile, I'm showing you this uh, screen. <clears throat> so this is Duke's here. I will show you here. Click here in Baku travel information. Pictures, whatever the club was showing you, all about all around the destination, like Flame Tower, Baku Boulevard, Hyder Ali of Center, Ferris Bill. Everything is here, and all the information, all the detailed information here in books here, and also you can log in on www.dukeinternational.com. I'm waiting for the questions. I think nobody is having any questions. Yeah, something is coming in the What attraction is there for children? So for children, we have a lot of attractions. If you will go to Gabala, you will see uh, there is a biggest amusement park, Gabaland. There your children can can enjoy. Let me check if I can get the pictures here in the website. In Baku also we have uh, uh, Baku Zoo. There you can take your children and they can enjoy. Okay, somebody is asking how is nightlife in Baku. So as we have already told that we have uh, a lot of nightclubs in Baku and uh, nightlife is very rich. Clubs are open uh, 24 hours. Few very nice clubs are open 24 hours. You can do clubbing, a lot of uh, uh, all the wine, whiskey and uh, vodka, this, uh, all, all kind of liquors are available on uh, in, in the supermarket, you can buy and you can you can explore the nightlife in the clubs. The guests have UK, USA, Schengen, valid, is required visa for Azerbaijan. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, if, if they have uh, Schengen valid visa, then uh, Azerbaijan visa is not.
so i'm getting messages that my another colleague is waiting uh, to come on uh, you know on zoom session because uh, some another meeting is pipeline i have to close this uh, session now and definitely uh, as per our schedule we will meet again with uh, some new exotic destinations tomorrow not tomorrow on monday i'm going to uh, give the training on georgia i think so you will get the links and all uh, um, information about this thank you very much and thank you uh, once again for joining this session thank you bye bye good luck